Okay, just checking things, setting things up here. Have a quick look. Cool. Hi, it's David Shummy at Fixer Frame in Mount Cravat. And this morning we're just streaming live to you guys uh, a little fit up of a job that we were doing the other day as part of uh, our Framers Club. Uh, every month uh, we have people come in, uh, professional framers and hobbyists, and learn different framing techniques inside something that we've got called uh, the Framers Club. And this is just a follow up to that because uh, I'm going to put this picture together. It was a, a frame that we wood grained in our uh, in our training, and we actually streamed it here, I think, on Facebook as well. So you may be able to catch that further back into our feed, or if you're watching this on YouTube, we're also streaming live to YouTube at the same time. So you can watch that there if, if you're in YouTube, by all means. Leave comments. I try to pick up on those and answer any questions. Anyway, this is one of these old... Uh, cathedral shaped frames and we've got a little bit of slumped glass that's going to go into it uh i'm going to just run through the fit up not really going to do too much you can pop it onto the counter there you can see what happens and just how this job finishes up so if you've got any questions please ask them in the chat uh i'll try and have a look at those afterwards uh anyway it's david at fixer frame we'll catch you just check out how we're going here this morning so i'll pop the camera around and put it down onto the table so you can see what we got going on Bear with me a sec. We'll get that lined up just so that you can can see our little little assembly little assembly area. Okay, so we got our our cathedral frame that we did the wood graining on. We've got our uh, picture. This is the old uh, backing and everything that was inside uh, with this from the original uh, photograph. The the customer has had this restored not not this actual piece but a digital restoration done so this is the original photograph and it's going to go back uh, into this uh, cathedral frame but something that I thought I'd show you this is actually a lot of people call this bubble glass or um, this is a slumped glass now this is not the original bit the, what had happened is they'd obviously replaced the original you can see the dish in that the original piece of glass must have got broken and they put a piece of acrylic in here and just it was just like it looked terrible so uh, Tudor Glass in South Australia uh, did the slump for us they're one of the last people actually that you can find in Australia that makes some of this this glass it's reasonably expensive but well worth it if you've got a reasonably good condition frame and an original photograph that you want to put together so in this example, what we're going to do, I just need to get a few little, I've just got some, this is just uh, foam wrapping, and we're going to use a little bit of this just to support uh, this frame when we're working on it, because the glass, we can't put this frame face down and have the, the glass on the table. So we've got a bit of foam, we'll use that in a sec. Before I do that, I just want to cut a uh, backing board and so just this is going to be a just a white foam a white foam backing and the easiest is if i use the old um the old template there and we just draw around that because we can we can take that it's it's going to fit inside the frame We may need we may need to trim it a little bit as we move on but we're just going to roughly cut that get that to size so this is just a scrap piece of foam uh, mat board that i have underneath and i'm just going to go and grab a knife give us a sec so we could cut this on a computer cutter but I'm just going to freehand this backing. Yeah, so we do have a shape like this pre-programmed into our computerized cutter, but we always did do cut things like this by hand. So today for you guys, 
And this is a new backing just to fill the space and give us a clean piece to pin into. Just check before I go any further that that actually does fit. Might be a little bit tight. Yeah, so little tad tight. Oh no, it's pretty good. Little tad tight down that edge. But I did leave a little bit here that might have just played an influence. So we get rid of that. So this is going to be our backing that's going to go into the piece. We're going to have a look at how we actually finish the back off as well. We're going to use a fairly traditional method for that. So I've got a picture, I've got backing. We're going to put some of our, our foam. Might only need a couple of bits of that. Just going to put it up under one end like that. And that should lift it up enough for us to pop our, our slumped glass in. And we're going to give that a bit of a clean. So just a standard window cleaner on this one. Or standard glass cleaner. Some of those, you get different types of microfiber cloths. This one actually we found works quite well. Um, a lot of the time we use gloves when we're cutting new pieces of glass so that we don't have to do a lot of cleaning. But it's important that the glass is clean. Yeah, this frame was originally a bright yellow and uh, if you'd watched our previous recording you'd have seen how I applied a wood grain finish to this. So we give it a bit of a blow, get the dust off the table there as well and out of the frame. This is an, an air blower, just clean that. And I give the picture a little bit of a blow. When I'm happy that they're both clean, I'm going to put that back into the frame. Now, we could leave out this, um, this uh, old backing that's in there, but I want to keep it together because it, it is the original backing and the original uh, image together. And so rather than, than toss that away, somewhere in the future, there might be some, something else written on that that is useful for someone else. So we'll leave it on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our new foam backing in up on the top of it. We're actually going to staple that one in. Just going to make sure the size is staple. Just going to pin that in. Pretty much check our alignment just as we go there. A little bit tight, we might take that one out. we cut this and you think it's symmetrical there might be a slight variation between one side and the other that looks a little bit better and so these are a, uh, a stainless steel staple 
It's like an upholstery staple, a wide crown variety. And that's just going to hold this image together. Let's have a little bit of a look. We give them a clean on the outside. Now sometimes this part can take quite a bit of time because there can be dust and things, but when we've got it clean from the beginning, and this one looks pretty good, we don't have a lot of extra cleaning to do or get any dust out. So this sort of bubbly type glass, you can see if I hold it on an angle, that actually then doesn't touch the photograph. So it's sort of an old method of protecting the photograph and stopping it from touching the glass. So that's with this new um, wood grained finish to match sort of the style of that era. And when we first had this, it was a bright yellow and it really didn't look good. Um, someone had obviously painted it with just some enamel paint that they had uh, knocking around in the in the house at the time, which is quite quite uh, quite a funny colour. You can actually see little remnants of it around the edge here. You can imagine something sort of like um, like a safety yellow kind of colour. So look on the back of that. Now this is one thing. Normally with picture frames, we actually tape up the back, but with something like this, we can actually either use a um, a wet glue on there, or in some circumstances, we'll use uh, an adhesive tape. And not to, the adhesive is not there to, um, we're not going to stick and cover this join. We're actually just going to use some adhesive to uh, apply a, uh, a paper uh, coating to it. So I just want to grab our little uh, double sided tape gun actually, because we've got one that's got a good aggressive adhesive. One sec. Yeah, so we could, could use um, PVA glue or another glue on there, but I'm just going to use, this has got on a very aggressive uh, double-sided adhesive, and I'm going to just apply that around the um, external edge. Oh, trying to run off on me there a little bit. Take that off a sec, we might need to adjust the tension. Very old machine this one, but it's uh, it's still good. And that's not coming off properly, bear with me. We might resort to what I was going to use originally, just a hand applied one. Just the tension of running around that circle is a little bit much for that tool. See, so yeah, glue is often used in this case, and um, there are methods that we use to get this looking really good. And uh, we're going to actually apply as they would have done originally, a brown uh, craft paper coating, which is a is an adhesive coating. Oh, sorry, not an adhesive coating. is a uh, is a strong paper coating to this adhesive. And what that does, that seals this up and stops bugs getting in, because you don't want any bugs, cockroaches, insects getting in between the actual glass and the image because on this type of image that uh, bubble gives a little space there for them to get into so we don't like that so this is just a, a sealing part of the job and we're just getting around how are you team good morning We 
I already had some of that other one there. I might put another little bit just over that. So what I've done, I've put just, um, this is actually the release film that you can see, the white coating, but we're gonna remove that. And uh, what, we'll, what we'll have underneath is our adhesive uh, part. So we have adhesive all the way around. And as I said, sometimes we use um, a glue in this situation. But today, for ease, we're going to put this as quite an aggressive um, uh, double-sided tape. So it's going to glue quite well. Now at that point, we're going to cover that with a brown, with a brown craft backing paper. Now, this one's quite a heavy weight one, about 90 uh, grams a square metre. And uh, traditionally, craft paper, and it's spelt K-R-A-F-T, craft is German for strong. So basically, it's strong brown paper. And we're going to put that onto the back. And I just drop it on and smooth from the middle out to the edge. Now there is a technique that we can use when, um, if we want this paper to tighten up and really be very flat, we can moisten this, it then bubbles up, but as it dries it shrinks and it pulls in together and holds everything together. But in this case, this is actually gonna be quite good where it is. The easiest ways is to use a, uh, a sandpaper and we can sand this edge. I might just cut around. But yeah, sanding is actually a good way to go as well. That way you end up with a very clean uh, external. I'm using my finger here to guide a small blade that I have in my fingers. The thing is, it's something that when we've done it over the years, you get very used to how uh, knives, blades react to where you're, where you're going. So it's something I'm quite familiar with. You may have issues trying to do it this way if you are trying to fix something up yourself at home. This is why you bring uh, jobs into professional picture framers because they will do a professional job on your on your framing. I might need to trim that up a little bit, make it a little bit neater. So I can take this brown off where I've cut. And what we've done is we've now got a nice clean sealed edge on that external. Let's trim the piece off there. So you can see, I haven't wet this, I've just left this as it is. So we've got a nice uh, brown paper back. We've got our piece on the front. On these bottom corners, we're just gonna pop a couple of little um, felt bump-ons. These are there to stop the picture sort of marking the wall. But also they help with uh, mold and mildew by preventing um, that frame touching in those lower corners. That just lifts it up and allows air circulation in behind the frame. It's very important. And then what we're going to do is pop our um, D rings onto it, put some new rings. Normally we, we use these a third down, which in this case is very close to the end of the arch. So I'm just gonna pop a little ruler across there and with my awl, make a little hole, a starter hole. Into and this is gonna be where the wire goes. So at that point, Couple of nice little rings.
They're just little self-tapping uh, screws that hold these rings in place. And then across there, we're going to put a decent wire. Like in this example, this is a pretty strong one. It's about a 19 kilo uh, breaking strain. It's a bit of overkill for something this size. But again, we don't really want the wire, or as they say always, the chain, one link in the chain, the weakest link. Well, in this case, we want to make the wire is not weak. So we always use something fairly substantial. Now we just trim that off. Now we've got our little knot. You might have seen the knot if you've ever Googled us <laughs> with how to tie wire, but it's uh, the knot comes out of the, out of the ring around the wire itself back down into the hole and then we just twist it off that actually gives a very secure knot one thing that you have to remember if you're ever putting wire onto a picture frame is that you do want a knot in this you don't just want to sort of twist it off so what we've got we've got our picture into our frame I'll just come back 